Well, tornadoes are the most violent form of weather on Earth here, able to destroy lives and communities in just seconds. But many twisters could actually be even more powerful than we think. Researchers have found that 20 to 25 percent of all tornadoes reach EF4 or EF5 strength. A number much higher than recently thought, and it is uh, really sort of retooling our notions of the EF scale ratings. So why do so many tornadoes get kind of a lower rating than they should? Right. Joining us now uh, to explain all this is the lead author studying this project, Dr. Josh Werman. He's the director of farm at the University of Illinois and a leading researcher of tornadoes. I've been following Josh, your work forever, and thank you so much for joining us. And um, I do want to ask why... The EF ratings uh, in your study underestimate the tornado wind speeds, uh, as your observations have shown. It seems like there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. The main reason is the Weather Service uses only damage to rate tornadoes. So if very strong tornadoes with 200, 300 mile per hour winds go through open fields or woods, they don't damage well-built structures and do not get high EF ratings, even though they're strong. Yeah, so we can have uh, large tornadoes, but if they're in the field, you know, they don't get that rating. So do we need to kind of enhance the enhanced Fujita scale and perhaps to go back and reclassify some of the tornadoes that we've, so we've found so many discrepancies with? Yes, absolutely. A group of us, wind engineers, structural engineers, radar meteorologists, uh, horticulturalists, are working in a team right now to come up with an updated method for estimating tornado wind speeds that use radars, tree fall, structural damage, like the EF scale, but all the information that we have now scientifically and from an engineering perspective to better rate tornadoes in the future. So a lot of, uh, I guess, assumptions have been made in the past between size and intensity, not necessarily from the researchers, but from, I know, storm chasers in the field. It's common to, to look at a tornado and say, wow, it's really big. It must be really strong. But it sounds like that what you found from your observations going back over uh, decades here with hundreds of tornadoes, you found something different. Can you explain? So the Doppler and wheels have measured hundreds of tornadoes, and we get direct quantitative measurements of exactly how strong they are, exactly how big they are. And sometimes it's very different than what they may appear visually. What we found is there's no real correlation, no dependence between a tornado's size and its intensity. There are big, weak tornadoes. There are strong, small tornadoes. There's all variety of different tornadoes. You can't just tell the intensity from its size. Wow, that's, that's pretty fascinating. So now, if we knew there was a much higher number or a higher chance for EF4 or EF5 tornadoes, now why is that important? And what can we do better to perhaps protect ourselves when we have the threat for tornadoes? Well, knowing that perhaps a quarter of all tornadoes are capable of causing really catastrophic level four or level five damage means that we should think carefully about how well we engineer tornado shelters, how we get community shelters into communities that don't have them um, so we can be prepared for these. As urban sprawl spreads, more and more of these EF4 and EF5 capable tornadoes will in fact realize EF4 and EF5 damage because they'll hit sprawling suburbs. So is uh, part of the reason why, going back to some of the earlier questions that we had, um, some of the reason why maybe uh, we're not seeing the relationship between the wind speed and the damage is that perhaps the high-end velocities that you found in these tornadoes last for such a very short time and that a slower wind for acting on a, on a, in a structure for a longer period of time could do just as much damage. Is that part of the factoring here? Both of those are probably factors. When a tornado has two or 300 mile an hour winds, it may only have it for a few minutes and it doesn't hit a structure and it's weaker by the time it gets to a structure. Um, we also don't have a great understanding of the difference between the effective duration. Um, so what's worse for a house, 150 miles an hour for a minute or 200 miles an hour for a few seconds? Both are really bad, but they do different kinds of damage. A lot of damage is caused by debris hitting structure. So it's bricks or wood or tree limbs hitting your house. And the longer that the wind lasts, the more chance that those bricks have of breaking something in your house. So duration does matter, but we don't have a good understanding. 
Wow, fascinating yeah, research. Totally. Yeah, great information. Thank you so much for your time. It's, yeah. Uh, Josh, Josh Warman, <laughs> director of Farm at the University of Illinois. Thanks for joining us today. And again, this is the mm. research that, you know, we as uh, operational meteorologists, we use that to hopefully help warn people. But it, it's so true. Tornado versus hurricane. Sometimes same wind speed, maybe even stronger, but duration is a huge factor. in it. Yeah, there's a lot of really amazing information coming out from these direct measurements of tornadoes. I look forward to reading uh, on their findings in the future. It's fascinating stuff.